Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, today I'll be talking about uh, Arduino Core API advancements in the context of Zephyr, uh, Linux, and IoT systems in general. So Nishant already has introduced us, but a little bit again about TI and our open source strategy. We strongly believe in the ideology of upstream first. So we also recently came up with devices which we have upstreamed even before we had the silicon in our hands. So that's how strongly we believe in upstreaming uh, all the support that we develop. And we have support for all these open source platforms like Zephyr, U-Boot, Linux, et cetera. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, I joined Texas Instruments just last year in July, fresh out of college. And uh, I primarily work on the power management of our uh, Sitara SOCs. Uh, I have also touched on a little U-Boot and Linux device driver development. And I'm the maintainer for the Arduino Core API for Zephyr. A little overview of what we'll be discussing in today's talk. I'll give a brief background of what Arduino is and the background of how this project got started. Uh, I'll cover briefly what is the Arduino Core API. Um, then we look at how the integration of the Arduino Core API looks with Zephyr. Then we'll look at the project structure, how it is structured today. Uh, and then we get to the challenges that we are facing. Um, then we'll also look at some native POSIX support that I have developed and uh, what users can do with that potentially. Um, that also ties into how you can test your Arduino code uh, and some of the future plans for the project. So a little bit about Arduino. So I suppose many people uh, in this forum are from a Linux or Zephyr background uh, and may not necessarily know what's the big deal about Arduino. So as a college student, um, the first thing that I dabbled with was a microcontroller called the Arduino Uno. It is a very cheap microcontroller and it is probably the first device that uh, anyone who transitions into a sort of uh, DIY electronic space starts programming with. And the easiest IDE to get started is the Arduino IDE. So Arduino is an open source electronics platform, as I said. And it has a very easy to use uh, kind of a language. So me personally and many other people I know uh, get started with languages like C++ in their colleges. So they come from a background of C++ and then they are looking to program their projects in a similar kind of environment. And Arduino offers you just that. So it is coded to the C++ standard. And uh, the Arduino Core API as such is the uh, standard defined API by the Arduino folks themselves for this programming language. And this repository is completely independent of uh, hardware. So anyone can just go ahead and implement the API in whatever backend they choose to do so. Here's how a um, very simple sketch in Arduino looks like. So you have something called the setup function, which uh, is kind of your initialization function. So you do that kind of a one-time thing. In this example, we are sort of sending the pin mux to, uh, for the pin corresponding to the LED built in, in the output mode. And then we are running the loop in the next stage. And the loop function, as the name suggests, is something that runs in a continuous loop on the microcontroller. So whatever you want to do inside that, you're expected to do in a repeated fashion. And we come to the background of uh, how this project started. So here I've attached the screenshot of a issue that was uh, raised as a sort of a feature request by Jonathan, who works in Goliath. And uh, he suggested that he would like to start a sort of a discussion on how we can support the Arduino ecosystem. And uh, for which there was someone else already before me whose username I've showed, uh, Soburi. Uh, who had developed a very rough proof of concept uh, where he uh, sort of just uh, compiled a easy to use Arduino application using Zephyr. But uh, it, it was not scalable as much. So we needed a proper plan in place. And um, 
I was also kind of new to Zephyr at that time. I was looking at how to get started. And I was wondering if uh, someone had already ported an Arduino layer or something like that. And that's when I asked on the Zephyr Discord. Uh, and that's when Jonathan reached out to me, hey, if you're interested, then we are indeed looking to add support for something like this. And that's how the Google Summer of Code proposal came into the picture. And this screenshot is where the actual formal proposal for my Google Summer of Code project was written. So what are some of the benefits of combining Arduino and Zephyr? So the first main thing is easier development. People who are comfortable with certain set of APIs do not easily want to migrate to new APIs. So uh, learning something that is in Zephyr to simply blink an LED, I have to read the entire Zephyr uh, GPR documentation and everything. And that is honestly a little bit of a steep learning curve for me. So since many people come from an Arduino background, uh, their past projects and prototypes are kind of mostly written in Arduino. But uh, they eventually hit a requirement to move to an RTOS-based system. For example, they want to uh, do certain tasks in parallel, for example, create threads for certain things. And then they see that maybe Arduino uh, is kind of a limitation for them. Because today, if I see in Arduino, they only support embed OS. And embed OS, uh, in my view, is not uh, very well maintained or at least lacks the amount of platform support that Zephyr does today. Uh, so Zephyr obviously seems like a very lucrative and non-vendor specific open source solution. Um, yeah. Quick question. Um, so it, I'm I'm like the complete opposite. Like I've never touched Arduino, and I know mm -hmm. that it's super popular. I've just never gotten into it. Mm -hmm. But I like I actually really appreciate that. They're using C++ 11 yeah. on this tiny, uh, it's like an 8-bit micro, right? Yeah. It's an AVR. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, so we're in Zephyr. I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of the C++ stuff. Technically, Stefanos is like the, the C++ guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I've kind of like owned the task of getting threading, C++ threading working in Zephyr. And it's mm -hmm. like this close. It's so close. And I'm just oh. wondering if that's something that would benefit you yeah. with the Arduino thing. Because I can see that totally just knocking down all the barriers. Mm -hmm. Would that work? Indeed. I mean, uh, today we have an example. If I could share the website here, I don't know how to. But if you go to my repository and uh, check out one of the samples we have, we call it Threads Arduino. So we are creating three loops uh, with different delays. And then we are using the Zephyr Create Thread API at the moment for lack of a better API. But if you can add support for something like C++ threads, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, it was um, the, the threading thing for me. It was mainly for thrift because that's mm -hmm. in C++. But I wanted to go beyond that because we don't need to waste all these extra thread stacks, even if they are dynamic. It's still kind of a waste. Really, the best thing to do is to go fully asynchronous and go coroutines because there's a standard for that in C++ now. Okay. So ideally, that would be where we all head because then we share one stack and it's all asynchronous. So there's nothing, you know, but just plant that seed. Yeah, that would be a good thing to have. Thanks, Chris. Um, and yeah, coming to the uh, final point where we can leverage so many boards that are already supported within Zephyr without needing to run a new, whole, uh, new set of APIs. Uh, and... Zephyr also offers some enhanced debugging abilities that I'll cover in the later sections. What are some of the platforms that particularly interest us in this context? So the, for example, the CC3220SF, it has no inherent support in the Arduino IDE. So if, uh, if someone who is familiar to Arduino just buys this microcontroller, tries to look for its support and does not find it, uh, he's kind of going to be disheartened. Hey, how do I get started with this platform now? So it has a TI SDK for called the Simple Link CC32XX. But again, that's a whole new platform to learn about, whole new installation kit. And so there is no support to readily run any Arduino projects uh, directly on this platform. But now with the new Arduino Core API support for this microcontroller, it is very much possible. So. The Arduino Core API has this way added support for CC3220. Um, some other applications are uh, 
few Linux SBCs. So if you want to run Arduino code on Linux platforms, for example, the Beagle Play, uh, which has a, a AM625 that Nishant talked about uh, in his previous talk. So we have a Cortex-M4 core where we are running Zephyr, and then we have the A53 core where we are running Linux. And so now you have the opportunity to develop, test, and deploy your Arduino core directly on the edge. So for example, you have uh, zero requirement to set up something on your laptop. You can simply set up a probably a VS Code server or something on your Beagle Play, and you, uh, you just log into it using a web-based uh, uh, interface, and you deploy and develop everything on the edge. So. Uh, we also have uh, an option to have support for the native POSIX or the native POSIX simulator, uh, which can be used to run some basic checks and uh, test and debug your Zephyr binary. Then um, you also have this device called the Beagle Connect Freedom, uh, which is a handled uh, microcontroller, which can also potentially run Arduino code, which it lacks today. Uh, uh, more bigger. A uh, platform would be the BeagleBone AI64. It falls in a similar category, but it has the TDA4 VM uh, SOC. It has a dual Cortex ARM A72 processor, and uh, it has a huge number of IOs. And it is a good platform, again, for uh, uh, feature-rich application development. And we recently had a GSOC project under BeagleBone.org, where we added Zephyr support for the R5 core. And I hope that we can take this forward to uh, add Arduino support for this R5 core. Let's see how that goes. Um, what happened? Yeah, now coming to the overall project structure. So how is the module structure today? We have the core folder, which contains all the actual implementation uh, behind the Arduino core API. And it contains a symlink to the actual API itself. Um, the reason why we did so, I'll come to later. Then we have the variants folder, which is kind of your rcharm64 uh, kind of a folder where we have all the board overlays and uh, header files. Then we have various samples to demonstrate all the uh, various things that you can do using our uh, project. And of course, we have some documentation on how you can add support. Um, here's how you can add new variants uh, to the Arduino Core API. There are only two steps required, which are pretty straightforward. First thing is you add an overlay file that matches the name of your platform. So you call it the board.overlay. And then an optional step today is to add a board-specific uh, header file uh, to create any sort of defines that may be specific to your platform. For example, on CC3220, you have the yellow, green, and red LEDs. So if you just want to uh, include them, then you can do so in that file. Um, so yeah, the reason we required a device tree overlay for Arduino itself is because um, many different boards have different <laughs> names of their nodes. So how are you uh, going to abstract all of that? So you need some kind of uh, aliasing structure. So in Zephyr itself, we have the concept of a board connector.dts. So you have many different SOCs or MCUs out there, but most of them are created in a, some standard kind of a format. So many of the TI MCUs that we have follow something that we call as launcher pad or a booster pack Excel. So um, you have these kind of board connector.dts files which um, inside which you can find board I2C, board UART. And then these you can basically uh, uh, use in the Arduino module by defining them as digital pin GPIOs or built-in LEDs or serials, for example. Um, so for this point, today it is a manual process. As you saw, someone has to go and write the code physically. Uh, and Jonathan came up with a good idea for auto-generating this. So uh, if we can somehow leverage Lopper to pass the existing device trees and then spit out a Arduino compatible kind of a device tree, then we can uh, literally generate uh, hundreds of board support in one go, which we lack today. 
I would love to see almost all of the boards that are supported in Zephyr to also be supported in the Arduino Core API. Yeah. I, I actually kind of wonder if that's something that could be like a build time only thing yeah. for the specific target. Mm -hmm. like there's There would be no real need to just in one step do all 100 or 400 or 600 boards. Mm -hmm. You just do it at build time mm -hmm. and like discard the stuff that you don't need, right? Yeah, maybe that could be done, maybe. Yeah. Uh, another issue that we have been facing almost ever since we started this project is a licensing issue. So Arduino, as of today, is GPL licensed, but uh, Zephyr, as you as we know, follows Apache. Uh, so uh, we are trying to talk with the Arduino folks uh, and see if we can come up with some way to solve these issues. But um, as of now, this Arduino core continues to reside as an external module under Zephyr project. So I wanted to know if there was any way to allow uh, the mainstream Zephyr to include Arduino as a module. So we have a pull request currently uh, by uh, Soburi that I mentioned earlier. This is the PR number. We can all go and have a look at it later. So what he does in that is he shifts all overlays to upstream Zephyr. So you don't have to maintain out of tree overlays. Then he adds a sub manifest for the rest of the module. So you can basically pull it in. And then we add an Arduino core seed to handle board specific overlays. Uh, and this kind of allows us to isolate the GPL code, which is the Arduino core API, from the rest of upstream Zephyr. I'm not a lawyer, but okay. uh, famous last words. But so, <laughs> yeah, I knew I was looking at you. Oh, you are? I, I was just thinking by just having the hash in West YAML, it shouldn't be that bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, putting the same source code on your own laptop is not a problem. Distributing the combined source code is the problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the LGPL is actually pretty clear in that it doesn't uh, it doesn't escape outside of the LGPL area, so it doesn't it doesn't apply, and so in this particular case, because we're not mixing Arduino code and uh, and uh, Zephyr, Zephyr code, it should be okay. Okay, uh, you should talk to your lawyers to get permission. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I talk to my I talk to my lawyers all the time about this kind of thing, so I'm super okay. familiar with the process. And certainly, you have open source program office lawyers in PI yeah. who can help you with this. Yeah, yeah. Should be true for many other components that we are. I don't want it too bad. <laughs> this should be true for many other uh, components that we are taking, right? Like the the Bluetooth stack, the, or I mean. The TICC uh, shield that we have taken, they all should have been on some different license, like the code base that TI generally gives is either LGPL or uh, Apache only, mm -hmm. BSD. So if we have to bring any of our existing code base into Zephyr, will that be an issue then? BSD Apache is... So BSD Apache okay, LGPL Apache not yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll take it to my lawyers then. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, from point of uh, extending the library support that we have today, um, we want to add some of the more uh, important libraries that are natively supported in most of the Arduino AVR platforms, which includes the SPI uh, library. It has all these kind of uh, functions like begin transaction and setting the bit order. And um, then we have the Arduino BLE. So Zephyr has an excellent BLE stack for Nordic today, uh, as I know. But um, there's no way to leverage it from the Arduino API, at least. So we have certain functions like BLE descriptor, UID, value size, et cetera. So if we can at least have some basic support for the Zephyr BLE stack in this manner, then it would be a very good to have feature. 
Then we also need uh, to add support for EEPROM. So EEPROM does not have to be the hardware EEPROM in that sense. I think it can be any sort of a non-volatile storage uh, solution. Um, now come to the debugging part. So how we get enhanced debugging options. So the Arduino ID itself, if you use, has very limited amount of debugging support. Uh, but if when we combine Zephyr plus the Arduino API sort of, we have no limitations to what platforms we can use to debug uh, such a system. So for example, we have open OCD or we have vendor debuggers like the uh, TI uh, CCS, or you also have everyone's favorite VS code. And um, what I've shown on the side right side here are some of the compatible boards and only these many platforms are sort of supported inside the Arduino IDE. Um, I'll briefly touch upon what is native POSIX, but uh, you can refer to Chris's talk uh, later on where he talks about POSIX in detail. So uh, native POSIX is basically a platform in Zephyr where a Zephyr application can be compiled together with the Zephyr kernel to create a normal Linux executable. So it's basically a dot slash a dot out kind of a situation. And this board is based on the POSIX architecture. So it shares its basic architecture uh, for threading and CPU hardware scheduling, etc. So this graph again, I've borrowed from one of Chris slides um, where, we, where we can see the speed and uh, versus the uh, debugability. So we have the native POSIX on the top of both, where we have very good amount of uh, uh, debugability and speed. Uh, then on the right side, we have speed versus the accuracy of hardware, where native POSIX sadly lacks because it is not real hardware. Uh, but again, the speed is good because you're running it on a host machine. Uh, I'll briefly show how uh, I did some debugging with native POSIX. So generally, RTOSs are a little bit difficult to debug, especially on embedded platforms, where you have issues like uh, multitasking, RTOS level tracing, preemption going on. And with native POSIX, it's sort of easier. For example, if you have a platform that does not easily support uh, you know, debug probes or something, and you just want to sanity check the firmware that you have written, then you can simply compile it with native POSIX for the moment, and then debug and instrument it as any other native program you would run on your system. So the screenshot that I have attached here is uh, from my GDB terminal, where I have quickly um, you know, launched GDB on my application, and I'm just uh, listing out the program that is being run here. So as you can see, it beautifully shows the exact Arduino code that I had written. And uh, uh, in that terms, the developer is familiar uh, to trace the, exactly the code that he has written and what appears in the debugger. Um, this is the program that I talked about earlier, uh, where we are using the K thread defined from Zephyr to create sort of three different threads that kind of run simultaneously to blink three different LEDs. Uh, in this example, I'm just printing uh, different strings in different orders. So how do you test or debug using native POSIX on a host? Um, we have a simple and of uh, prototyping Arduino code. Uh, and it is possible to leverage even Zephyr I2C emulation, for example, if you use the native simulator. And uh, we have a quick example of some basic UART and threads test that I showed earlier. So this is after I figured out how to uh, integrate Zephyr and VS code sort of. So what I have here is a simple debugging, uh, C debugging uh, extension inside VS code. And as you can see, it has successfully detected my program and loaded it into the editor. And on the left side, I have all the local variables and all the variables that I want to watch. And uh, in the terminal below, you can see the output of my actual application. Uh, I've also managed to add debugging support on a physical hardware platform, which was the AM62 M4 core. So I have connected via CCS over here and loaded up my application on M4. And uh, on the small terminal that you can see, I am uh, printing the logs. And at the same time, I can see one-to-one -one correspondence with the code that I have written. Um, with that, I come to the uh, final slide. 
what the key takeaways are. So we want to upstream Arduino Core API to Zephyr um, to have better visibility and uh, kind of better integration with the rest of Zephyr RTOS. Um, we want to expand our Arduino API for libraries like Spy, EEPROM, BLE, etc. Um, adding support for things like native sim, uh, native simulator, uh, which is the native POSIX simulator, would allow us to do some host level debugging and testing. Uh, we would like to make it easier to add new variants using something like uh, Lopper to pass device trees. And uh, we would like to make Arduino code to work seamlessly on a POSIX based system, which I briefly uh, discussed with Chris earlier. So the idea kind of is that if there was some way for a beginner who is coming to a SBC platform, for example, a Raspberry Pi or a Beagle Play, and they don't want to learn bash scripting or Python scripting, and they just want to sort of take their Arduino app and see if it can blink the Raspberry Pi GPIO. Obviously, uh, there is no direct way of doing that. In Linux, things work way differently. But at least Linux talks the language of POSIX. So if somehow we can leverage POSIX in Zephyr to tie into the Arduino API uh, and make this work, then uh, it would be interesting to discuss this opportunity. Um, these are some references that you can go through for all the things that I've discussed so far. And um, I would like to thank Texas Instruments, the Linux Foundation, Goliath.io, and all these folks who helped me prepare for this talk. I, I know John, he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. um, but the, there was a, a, a question he asked earlier. So we're not there yet with the C++ threads, which is my bad. And I know it's just like, I got to put in the time to fix it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can use as of, I think it was like yesterday. Yeah. You can use ISO C11 threads. Okay. Uh, which nice. are just as easy to use. Okay. Uh, and that just works, so. Awesome. Yeah. I will test Standards. that out. <laughs> yeah. Yay, standards. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.